This is the Metal Roofing Learning Channel, brought to you by Western States Metal Roofing, one of the industry's best manufacturers of metal roofing and siding. With over 110 different colors and finishes to choose from, discover why architects, designers, and contractors make Western States Metal Roofing their go-to source. So today I'm here with Mike Rubio, the president of Western States Metal Roofing, and we're here to talk about custom panels. And Mike, can you kind of explain what you mean when you say a custom panel? Uh, a custom panel would be any panel um, that we don't have a drawing for or is not a set uh, profile that we do on one of our road formers. Uh, it would be a panel that somebody would draw up. Uh, they have an image in their head. We ask them to put it on paper with the uh, the ability of having this new Yorns uh, 32 foot traumatic, um, it gives us the ability to do a 32 foot long panel. When you have a custom panel, do you, can you make somebody one panel if they need it? Is it at least a couple hundred square feet? What do you generally see with custom panels and where it makes sense? Uh, as far as custom panels, it could be one panel up to you know a thousand panels. So walk me through the process of what it costs. In other words, if you're going to make one panel, it, you're going to charge a certain amount of money to make maybe a, probably a mock-up, I'm guessing, after you see a drawing, and then is that money applied to the invoice? Correct. Um, right now, we're charging uh, about $250 setup charge for to a mock-up to do a mock-up of a panel. Um, if the job is large enough, where it's over uh, about 25 panels, we can absorb that cost. If it's one or two or under 25 panels, I can't absorb a $250 charge into one panel. So, so if I'm an architect, for example, my client might want to see a real life piece of metal god for 250 dollars that's a bargain to get a client a real piece of metal in the shape that they've dreamed up yeah like i said if you could touch it and feel it and see how it is uh it's going to be uh it helped the job help the architect and have the customer that way they could visually concept uh, what it's going to be um ultimately like i said it's just downtime for the machine so we're not trying to make money off of the setup but it does cost money to program uh, this machine and and make pieces. And it's more expensive to make a panel on a folder versus on a roll former, correct? Correct. Uh, panel, uh, when it goes through a roll former, obviously it's going from coil through a decoiler, uh, and then it goes through the, the roll former and past the multiple stations and you get a finished part. And it's as a lot faster, as, right? It's a lot faster. As far as with the folder, uh, you have to cut that part, depending on what size it is, then feed it into the machine, and then the machine has to do multiple bends to make that part. Now, again, every metal panel profile is different, but ballpark, is a custom panel twice as expensive as something that's made on a roll former, three times as expensive? What's kind of a ballpark as to like how much more expensive it is? If it's under about 12 foot, it's going to be... Uh, probably about double the price of a roll former. Uh, if you start getting into your 20, 25, and 32 foot lengths, it's gonna be a lot more, uh, being that you have to cut the blank, feed the blank, and then what waste do you have? Uh, Cause you might have to a 48 inch feed, and let's say you're using a 32 inch part, where oh, you have sure. six inches a drop 32 foot long that you have to cut. So it, it automatically works by part by part you have to look at. But the longer the part is, uh, wider the part is, and uh, depending on uh, the coil feed. Um, so that's something that we also will work with the customer too, depending on the coil feed. If he comes up, draws a part up, and we see that we could change it a little bit and make it worthwhile with uh, the coil feed we have, we'll bring that to their attention too. And we might be able to get two parts out of uh, a 48 inch stretch out compared to one part of how they had it dried out. So that's what we're always trying to look at, uh, saving money for the customer. So my best case scenario, short panel, fairly easy configuration, about double the price. Worst case scenario, longer sheets, more difficult configuration, possible waste on the coil feed, three to four times the cost. Is that kind of a good summarization? Obviously, panel by panel, part by part, we have to look at, but yes. So what are the length limitations and what are the width limitations of the panels? Uh, 40 inch uh, stretch out is the width uh, as far as going into the machine uh, for what we could do as far as for the back gauge. So we can actually use a 48 inch uh, wide uh, coil, but depending on the part and how far wide the part is, we, we can only basically make a max 40 inch because uh, of the back beam. 32 foot would be the max length and 16 gauge would be the max gauge. 
but in a painted material you're typically going to be 24 or 22 gauge maximum just because of the availability of the coil correct correct uh 24 and 22 are going to be a uh, are better uh we do have 20 gauge uh in uh white um and a couple other colors and then uh like you said uh 18 gauge is going to be more a606 and galvanized and 16 gauge is going to be a606 and galvanized a606 meaning core 10. correct are there some design limitations or if you can draw it uh you can make it generally how, how does that work pretty much uh we're, we're pretty happy with it. if you could draw it uh we could bend it and we actually trademark it it's our slogan don't use it out there um but uh we're pretty comfortable with that um like you said uh this is a new machine uh it everything does have limitations we're going to work our way through it uh we've had the machine for about a month so uh we're finding out what we can and can't do and, and at this point we could pretty much do uh, most everything that we put in front of that machine besides the look of the panel are there some other things i think you'd mentioned tapered earlier like what are some other things you could do that would be that would be unique or custom uh we could do tapered panels um and before Descri we describe that in, in in a little more detail please a tapered panel would be let's say a panel at one end is uh 20 inches and at the other end it's 12 inches uh, that would be more of a tapered panel and now we could actually make ribs inside the panel and basically, if we wanted to have the ribs, let's say four inches on one side, two inches on the other side, and then alternate them, basically two inches on one side, four inches on the other side, so it could actually make a pattern uh, into the wall. And we are developing something like that, um, so you could actually have a, a tapered wall panel um, that you could put up on a wall. Another application that happens quite often for custom panels is it's, an, it's a job that's been up for a lot of years, and nobody knows where they bought the panel or they don't even make the panel anymore. Is that something that comes up often? It, it comes up uh, a lot more than what you would think. Uh, and then um, the, how we addressed it earlier, they have to uh, pretty much uh, rob from Peter to pay Paul. So you, know, you have a panel that's in the middle of the building, they don't know how to fix it. So they'll have to rob from the end of the building, fill it into the middle of the building, and then find something close to kind of fill in the edges and you know, ho hopefully the color works and it matches with the customer. So at least this way, uh, we'll be able to get them something that's a lot closer to what they have. Um, hopefully it's identical to be able to work, but if not, they could still do the same way, take from the edge, fill it in the middle, and then have a panel that looks a lot closer than what we've had in the past. So you could match the panel configuration, but typically the paint is gonna look different because that's gonna be an older paint compared to a newer paint and also the color might not be spot on. So that, that's typically where you might put the, one of the newer pieces towards the edge of the building so it wasn't so noticeable. Ultimately, if it's an older job, older style job, a lot of times, you know, this, the material that's on there is faded, it's old. They're gonna be painting it anyways. And then, like I said, you could even get that one piece in, get a color match. You know, now pink technologies are so good. Then color match that paint. And oh, maybe do it in a bonderize, for example, where a paint grip where the, the paint would adhere to it pretty decent. Yeah, yeah that way, and that way you have something that's close to it, a little more of a, a closer match than uh, going uh, with, with a brighter color. All right, so you said if they draw it, that's one option. What if it is an old panel like we're talking about and they have an actual physical panel? Can they send it to you or bring it into one of our facilities? Yeah, the, the best way uh, they would have to send it to our Phoenix facility because that's a, we're going to be pretty much making uh, the custom panels out of uh, due to the machine here in Phoenix. Uh, the best way is to have a physical uh, sample of it. That's about four to six foot. Uh, sometimes people want to break off a little piece, 12 inch piece. Uh, it's good for profile, but ultimately to see the, the panel itself is good to have a four to six foot. Uh, they could draw it and uh, we could tell them if we can or can't make it, but uh, it's better to have a physical piece so we could look at it, measure it, test it, look at, you know, the height, um, you know, physical uh, specimen is better all the way around. I understand that we're going to manufacture it out of Phoenix, Arizona, but what if the job isn't in Phoenix? Can we ship it cost effectively somewhere other than Arizona? Yeah, we uh, have regular route checks that service all across the United States, Canada, and Mexico. So we could ship uh, finished panels all, anywhere, um, anytime. So when you say route truck, you mean you share the cost of the freight to keep the freight reasonable, no matter, irregardless of where it's located? Correct. Uh, you share the cost, uh, being that we have facilities in Texas, Washington, and a drop point in California. 
Uh, we do generally try to get to one of those drop points and then ship additionally across the country. If that's not feasible or works better for us, we have route trucks that service all across the states. Uh, and you're you're going in on a truck and everybody's paying for a portion of that truck to be able to keep that cost down. Hey, Mike, I just want to thank you for discussing what's involved with, with designing a custom panel. Thank you. And remember, if you could draw it, we could bend it. Want to learn more? Check out these videos.